Hey you guys, it is me, Laura. I'm a homeschooling mom to three kids, ages three, eight, and 11. And today I wanted to show you a little bit about how I keep all of these library books organized. It is future Laura here. And my son is actually still 10 at the time of posting this video. I had a major computer issue happen this weekend and my motherboard fried and I am way behind with videos and I don't have a computer right now so I'm editing this from my phone. And I was talking to Sarah from Rolling with the Rouses and I was thinking I might actually show you guys over time, maybe one video at a time, one shelf at a time, what books I have inside of my bookshelves if that's something that you're interested in. So. As you watch this video, just take a look at the different categories and let me know which ones you'd be interested in seeing if that's something that is interesting to you. In the meantime, just be prepared for a crazy posting schedule over the next little bit because I'm not sure when my computer will be fixed and what I will have lost completely and it's still kind of a mess. But anyway, without further ado, here is my library organization. So a little while back, I posted a video that gave you a tour of our homeschooling spaces and it included our homeschool library. And a few of you said that you would like to see more information about how we organize our books. So I thought I would walk you through, I'm gonna be putting a few books, um, a few new books into our system on our shelf. And so I thought I would show you um, kind of how that whole process works. And it's pretty simple. And it might be something that you could use. Of course, we have a large library. That's something that's very important to me. There have been times where we have not had access to a good local library. And so building out a good home library has been really, really important to me. I'm trying really hard to keep my books limited to what fits on the shelf. So there are times when we have books going in and out. So if I find that the books are, the shelves are getting overcrowded or I just don't have space for new books, then I will have to go through my books and get rid of some. And it kind of keeps things a little bit under control. But I feel like this is a good sized library with a library that is, let's see, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got ten shelves, like ten shelves that have five cubes. So that's a lot of books. So we have to have a way to keep them organized. And I didn't want to have to be the one to put them away all of the time. So just a quick little overview here. You see all of these books have red dots on them. So this entire cubby has red dots. And I don't care where the books go in here as long as they all have red dots and they're put away properly. So in this case our red dot is transportation books so I know that if my kids want a book that is transportation based they can get that there. And we do have more categories than there were colored dots so some of them are going to have washi tape on them. So washi tape is really nice because it doesn't damage the books and it's very easy to change out. You get a big roll and it'll last for quite a while. But this is the symbol that we have for all of our plant related books. So if the kids need to find a book about plants, they know where to go. So that makes it nice and easy. Now, another step to this system is that we have, I have everything, all of these books are in the computer. I use a program called Libib and I'll show that to you in just a little bit. I'll show you what I do with a new book and how I put it in the system. But Libib is a free library management app and um, I don't have people borrowing books so I don't need to do the paid version. I could just do the free version. And what I'll do is I go in and each one of these um, types of washi tape or stickers is a group in my Libib account so that if I am looking for a book, say I'll put the human body in here. This is a shine a light book. So when I enter it into the computer, into the program, I will put down all the words that I could think of that keywords that go with that book that I might be looking for a book. So in this case, human body, it might be x-rays, doctors, whatever I can think of. So that then when I'm planning a unit study, I can go in and search what I need and all the books that I need that are in our library come up and then if I go to the group, it'll tell me exactly where I can find that book on my shelves. So I also keep this master list right here on the bookshelf so that the kids can easily find whatever books that they need when they're looking for them. And it also just kind of helps us to know where we might, where we might need to go for different books. You may not need this many categories in your library and that's fine. Just use whatever makes the most sense for you. 
but each one of these categories has multiple books and I do try to organize my books based on how I will be using them in homeschool because that is how I reference them the most. But when I'm ready to put some books into my system, I usually actually have a really huge stack of books because I don't do this as often as I could, but I'm just gonna show you a couple books today. I have this bin. So this has my book tape so that if I need to repair any books or there's a few of the stickers that don't stick very well, so I will put book tape over them. Um, mostly the white ones don't work very well, so I'll use that for those. But I have all of my colored stickers in here and I have all of my washi tapes that I use for my books and so I'll have that ready to go. And then this is Libib. This is where I keep track of all of my books and it will tell me how many books I have in my library. Um, this number is a little higher than I would like it to be right now, um, but I definitely keep an eye on that so that I am reasonable about the number of books that we have in our home. And as you can see, I've got them listed because I put them in groups. Those are all my animals or aquatic books. And then I go down to animals, my orange, my birds. Um, and then I have bugs and insects and green is just animals in general. So if it's got multiple animals or it doesn't go into one of those categories. And so I can go through my books that way. But if I want to add a new book, I just come over here, click add items, and then I put them in by ISBN. So I am just gonna type in that ISBN number. And then I just click add book. And easy as that, it pulls up the book for me, it has it there. So I'll come in here and I'll take a tag. So this would be, um, I'm doing this with one hand. So inventions, inventors, series, technology. When I make my tags, I'm trying to think of all the things that I might be searching for. Like if I'm going to make something for school or looking for something that's interesting for my kids, what are the things that I might type in? And so that will help pull that up. So then I press enter and then I get to pick what group this is going into. And this is just kind of a fun reading book. So I really have two choices for a book like this. I could put it with Inventions and Technology and the whole series is there, but because it's a series and it's really more of just a fun kind of book, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my stories catalog um, category. So I just type in stories um, and it's got there what color that is so that I know what color washi tape I'm gonna put on it. So it's got the books. So I'm gonna come in here and I can't do this with the phone. So I'm gonna put this washi tape on real quick and I'll be right back. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing with Golden Goblet. And this is a book that could honestly either go in my Africa section or um, it could go in my ancient history. And so trying to think about when I would use this, I would probably use this in history when we're studying about ancient Egypt. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and put it in my ancient history time period, but I will, be for, I will make sure that when I am doing my tags that I put Egypt and Africa both in the tags because I know that those are other scenarios that I might want to use this book for. have it so I have these books and then now I will go find the spot on the shelf where they go and I will stick them there and that is how this works that's how we keep up with our homeschool library it's super easy because the kids can find what they're looking for and over time they learn they have learned like which books are in which section like I don't move them around a lot so they know kind of where to find the orange dots or whatever it is that they're looking for and it's super easy for them to put it away and I do find that my kids definitely have colors or categories that they tend to gravitate to 
and I think that that's kind of fun. I have one child who we have a big middle ages section because that's what he really loves and he knows where those books are and he goes over and grabs them and he's looking at them all the time. I have another one who is very interested in um, picture books and just the fun story picture books and they'll go there and pick those out and I have another one who's very interested in all the science and techie kind of things. So it's a really good way to help my kids interact more with the library. It's a great way for me to find the books I need when I need them and keep them up to date. If I rotate books out I just go into my system and easily delete them and give them to the library or whatever um, the thrift store somewhere that they can be put to use again by another family and that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear what some of your ways are for organizing your books in your home, and I hope that you have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.